Welcome to the landing demonstration lesson. In this lesson, we will overview an approach and landing in the Huey. As with fixed-wing aircraft, landing a helicopter is one of the more challenging aspects of any flight. Almost every landing in a helicopter is a unique experience, because the approach can vary greatly depending on helicopter weight and payload, wind, altitude of the landing area, obstacles, and other factors. Executing safe and effective approaches takes skill and practice. All of your landings will be visual, so you should always have a good mental picture of the landing area and plan an optimal approach. Ideally, the approach should be free of obstacles and directed into the wind. For training purposes, we will be landing on a clear runway in ideal weather. For a good practice approach, we'll start about a mile from the landing point at about 500 feet of altitude and 60 to 80 knots. Most runways in this area include an inner homing beacon about 1,200 meters from the threshold, and this makes for a good visual marker to line up for the approach. Unlike fixed-wing aircraft, helicopter approaches continually reduce airspeed in the descent toward the landing point. The approach is terminated with a hover over the landing point, or, if a hover cannot be performed, with a running landing directly onto the skids. The continual speed reduction during the approach causes significant control challenges. As you saw during takeoff, the helicopter exhibits a change in balance as airspeed varies, requiring constant adjustment on the controls. Starting speed of 60 to 80 knots, deceleration will be gradual and control will be consistent and predictable down to approximately 40 knots. The collective will be reduced for the descent and pedal input will be minimal around the neutral position. The dynamics will start to change quickly below this speed as you begin to lose translational lift. The helicopter will start to sink and bleed energy quickly. You will need to increasingly raise the collective while adding corresponding left pedal input and adjusting the cyclic to maintain your approach path to the landing point. Your goal will be to maintain the descent until you enter a low altitude hover just above the landing point, after which you can perform a vertical landing to touch down. I will now begin our approach by lining up with a runway using the inner homing beacon as a visual marker. Our goal for this practice will be to land on the runway numbers. As you make the turn for the approach, slightly reduce collective and pull the cyclic slightly back to settle into a descent path at a rate of approximately 500 feet per minute. Watch the vertical velocity indicator to maintain the rate of descent and keep an eye on the airspeed indicator to monitor your airspeed. Once you are settled on the descent path, imagine a box on the canopy where the landing point is positioned and try to keep it there as you approach. This will help keep a straight descent path right down to the landing point, so all you have to worry about is controlling your airspeed and rate of descent on the approach. As airspeed drops below 50 knots, begin to make small increases on the collective and adding light left pedal as necessary to maintain heading. Stop the nose from pitching up by slightly easing off a little cyclic back pressure to prevent a rapid deceleration. I've marked the current position of the controls on the controls indicator so you can see how it changes by the time we enter the hover over the landing point. As you near the landing point, pull back on the cyclic slightly to raise the nose and gently come to hover. Notice the copious amount of collective and left pedal required to maintain the approach.
Once a stable hover over the landing point is achieved, begin to gently reduce collective and adjust pedal and cyclic as necessary to perform a vertical landing. This concludes the landing demonstration.